what I'd like to do. And if Joe does the same, if Joe can re-kill those, then I'm going to have to just shoot lights out again. Well, Joe's probably going to try to move you around. Well, I'm sh see, I'm sure it'll be yeah, real precise, with angles and slow. That's what it is. Yeah, I, we'll see. So you're going to try to shoot against that and hope for the best. I got no choice. I can't rally with these guys. Okay. <laughs> I got to just end it. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much, John thank Bike, you. and good luck to you. Thanks. Okay.
at a living legend who has dominated the one wall handball scene for the last decade. We have on the sideline a man who wrote a marvelous article about handball in Sports Illustrated last year. His name is Mickey Desen. He won a very prestigious literary award for that piece of literature about West Fishery, about handball, about all you folks sitting here today. Mickey Desen over there. And now, probably the highlight of the day. You've all been wondering, what does a living legend look like? <laughs> out of his own mind. <laughs> but there's one thing you cannot deny. The consummate skill, court knowledge, the ability to move the ball, and the ability to keep winning, which he has done for the decade of the 80s. He's like Ronald Reagan. He's a great communicator of hands. He communicates with the handball. And now, stay tuned for a marvelous match with the great Joe Dirt. Okay, we're just about ready to go in this uh, second semi-final match of our national championships. As I mentioned, the defending champ is Joe Derso. He's been a marvelous player for the past decade. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, he rates a definite 10 so far as ball control, court knowledge, and all the nuances of playing this game. Freddie Silvi is a very controlled player. He doesn't make too many mistakes, not too many unforced errors. However, with the Derso power, uh, the unforced errors may come up in, in Freddie Sylvia's column. He's a wonderful athlete, a fine gentleman, and you're going to see a terrific game. Let's see what happens, all right? Okay, let's play ball. Zero. 
Score zero zero. We're ready to go. Joe Derso just hit an overhand left rollout kill, which is quite unusual at this juncture. And because of the smattering of applause, he loved it so much, he overswung and hit the next serve out. Well, that's show business, folks. What you gotta do is keep your mind focused on the game. Last year when Joe played Albert, Albert served out four times. Joe had five opportunities to kill the ball, and he wanted to roll it out, and he wound up missing, making it a contentious game last year. This is known as the feeling out process in the handball scene. Joe typically takes his time. He warms up slowly, and just like John Bike, ultimately will crank it up about the 12th or 13th point. And then he's like a well-revved locomotive. Sometimes he can't be stopped. See, uh, he also has the tournament experience. This is Freddie Sylvia's first time in the semi-finals, so the butterflies might be there. Durso was used to this type of thing. Out. This is the feeling out process in any game. About three, four, or five points. Each player, like in a boxing match, feels out the other opponent, tries to warm up, tries to get a little control of the ball, tries to get a feel for the court. Durso typically just keeps bringing the ball back at the beginning. But then when he gets into trouble, he starts powdering in the shot. He's one of the masters, Matthew, at uh, not using up useless energy if the opponent is not really up to the task. Are you hinting that uh, Freddie isn't up to the task? Uh, I don't believe Freddie can reach a level that's necessary for this type of play. He's going to look good for a, a certain amount of time, and then the pressures will build up. There's only one fly in the ointment is uh, Dursley's ego. If he doesn't think his opponent is worth his being on the floor, then he will start to make very dramatic mistakes. But I don't sense that here. I looked at the draw sheet and the top half of the draw where Dursa was put in first position, first seed. There wasn't much of a competitive fierceness to the field, whereas in the lower brackets, there was one early round between Paul Williams and John Bike, which in my judgment uh, should have been a, at least a minimum of a quarterfinal match. But that's the way these things go. Now, the other side of the issue is, if Durso hasn't had much competition up to now, he may not be sharp. Sometimes in the tournament you need a series of tough competitions before this juncture to get you in the right mode. He's just feeling it out. Joe seems to be trying various things. That's correct. It's more for the camera than it is for the uh, purposes of unsettling. Uh, so are you alright? Aaron, be careful. He, he seems to be trying to see what the limits and what he can do is. I really, I, I hate to disagree with you, my friend. Please disagree with me. He, he's in a world of his own right now. I he's right just, all the time, so I like people to disagree with me. He's just floating around there in the handball world, getting a sense of the crowd and getting a sense of the camera. Uh, actually, no one is really here except him, and he's just going through a routine of hitting the ball to the wall within the confines of the court. So you may find that hard to believe, but as a romanticist yourself, you could probably buy some of it. No, I understand that. As a matter of fact, he compares himself to Ali, and I always felt Ali felt he was all by himself for me. The boxing ring, unless he was fighting Joe Frazier. As in any, in any sport or in any pursuit of uh, whether it be artistic or otherwise, the really top people in all those things are people who are of another mind, they see with a clarity the entire picture, your sense of, of feeling.
feeling of ease about their faces, about the way they comport themselves. Uh, Joe, however, gets to a certain part of the game and he starts going into certain language, which is not really consistent with the top player. But he's just feeling his way through this match, and uh, he's, he's going to take the course of least resistance. He's not going to overly concentrate. He's just going to keep moving the ball if it goes his way. Nice, like that, he'll just continue to do that. Joe seems to be either trying to hit the short line or driving that first serve to the right. What you're seeing now is he's actually preparing for his next match, believe it or not. He's not concerned about Freddie Sylvia at all. He's just trying to figure out what's going to happen against John Bike. Well, that's about the third kill of Fred made on this one. Out. And out. Five. Out. Ruby, Fred seems to feel games. he has to uh, kill everything. Is it possible Five. for you to get your Four. brother yourself and uh, which is this, Charlie Daniel check in? Joe Dan. Joe. You know, all the, all the other guys you were talking about sure, together. Sure, I had that in mind. Okay, good. Because I don't want to lose you. All righty. Four, five. I'd have, like to do it between games if we could. Of course. Because afterwards, they'll... Very good. Oh, come on. This is the first time on record that Morris Levitsky is actually sitting down. That's what he said. He never sat down. For all these years, he's been standing there doing an outstanding job on the line. I think he likes to stand. He does. But I think the people in back room told him to sit down. <laughs> he has a wonderful sort of stomach out look when he stands. The score is 6 4. Good serve, huh? You have to, you have to keep in mind. Freddie Sylvia at this juncture can only do so much in trying to win this game. There's a, there's a certain level which you can't rise against against the likes of their so I saw Joe can seal a smirk right there. As if he were trying to hide his contempt for his opponent. And I think you're uh, jumping the issue here, Matthew. It's probably just uh, a bit of guess. No, we can't do it now. We've got to wait for a Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. They call the time, right? Eight. <laughs> no, he's still warming up. The score is 8 4. See on those first few Ow. serves, which uh, Durso hit, which he just edged over the short line, he was actually getting a feel for this court. And of course, most likely the championship will be played here tomorrow. I would play Joe the way that Freddie hit that shot, which is try to keep the ball on his feet, drive it hard. Clearly a two-bounce pickup by Joe. He, he has sort of scorned uh, Levitsky's goal, but it was the correct one. Well, all these half-speed balls, huh? As I say before, if uh, Darso lets his mind wander a little too far as to uh, Freddie's uh, ineptitude, it's going to come back to haunt him because that sometimes gives a lesser player confidence beyond his own means and he starts making striking shots. I don't think there's any trouble here. Darso is still warming up very slowly. He still is a presence on the court. Sylvia has not been here before in the semifinals. For the past 12 years, Joe has been in the finals. How do you take that into account? He's crowding you on swing with your language. Don't let him intimidate this is a This is a switch. The referee is telling Freddie Sylvia to watch his language. Oh, he's in, on the right court with the right opponent. Okay, score is 8 5. Joe seems to be throwing it for that short line, that ace of the yeah. short line. Hit the line. Out. He really doesn't care. He's, this is still part of the game where they're just five, dancing around, eight. throwing jibs. It's 5 8. 
Kershaw would continue to play the same way he has, Come unless Freddie should take a, like a three-point lead, which is I find hard to believe. I don't even, can't even comprehend that happening. Well, if you win, you win by one. You win by twenty. What's, what's going to happen now is uh, Freddie's uh, conditioning is always suspect. He gets emotionally involved. He was already talked to by the referee to watch his language, and that's one of the first signs of what happened, emotional yeah. fatigue. How can you miss the ball entirely? Well, well Durst's body was blocking out, and Freddie Sylvia as the referee for a screen ball. So he's just waltzing around. It's not real cool handball, but uh, we have to go through this. This procedure for the uh, climax tomorrow, which is what everybody is looking forward to. It's going to be tremendous drama here, especially when you put it in the context that Al almost beat Pike. Al almost made Pike look like a, a human being after all. But as I mentioned, Pike is a seven-day national player. And he actually peaks in the sixth or seventh day. This is only the third day of the tournament. And when he had played Maroni, it was the first game yesterday. Everybody thought Maroni was going to be the winner. And Bike just cranked up and even beat Maroni. 11 1 in the tiebreak. Unbelievable. I must say this to Albert's credit in winning his game. He neutralized Bike tremendously by serving to Bike's strong left hand, keeping them off balance, then moving in and dropping it into the right. Unfortunately, when the pressure was on, Albert overran and jumped into the cement, actually hurting himself. And that was one of the reasons he didn't do well in the tiebreak. I feel like a baseball announcer trying to add color well, while nothing much five. is going on in the game, but well, it is 12 5. Joe is moving God. around, he's doing what he wants to do, which is those two serves to the short line and well, driving five. to the long line. So. You see, if you put this into perspective, he's lost his serve about three or four times on double falls and hitting out. Well. If this were a tough opponent and it was really tense competition, he wouldn't be doing that. He is only a function of what his opponent is doing. The more his uh, opponent looks weak, the more Joe will tend to screw around. See, he sensed he wasn't doing well with those double falls, so he had to treat the crowd to some uh, center ring spectacular, that's what it was. He moved laterally all the way to the left, caught up to the ball and dropped it neatly into the right corner. Okay. Rudy, help me out. Is this the timeout? Yeah. Is it? Who took the timeout? Why don't you tell me? Running across the field there in the pink shirt is my beautiful daughter, Karen. She'll be coming back, and I'm sure Matthew Paris will. Uh, I'm still warming up, believe it or not. My back hurts a little. I gotta warm up slow. I promise not to notice it. If I hit one shot wrong, I'm gonna. My back's gonna go out. All right, I'm taking my time. I don't care how many points you get. Don't matter. Me. He gets the lead. Playing, the tape, that, playing the tape back, though, of the uh, preceding semifinal match. There was a tremendous display of courage by John Bike. There he was, the uh, infant terrible, consuming a great player in the form of Danny Maroney. In a preceding match before that, he annihilated six foot four, 230 pound Paul Williams. They both went toe to toe with the ball moving over 90 miles an hour at incredible angles. Here comes my daughter Karen across the court again. Isn't she delightful, folks? Wow. How lucky can a father be to have a beauty like that? Unbelievable. Well, it's time in again, but uh, Pike deserves a lot of credit. He fought his way back. He had, having lost the first game, was losing the second game, and on top of losing the second game by score something like 15 to two, he sustained, sustained an ankle injury. And in Albert's subconscious, that probably led him to conclude that the match was over. And it wasn't over. 
despite being in superb condition for seven day tournaments, cranked up, came back and overwhelmed Albert in the tiebreaker. Unbelievable. What a marvelous match that was. Now it's about the 13 to 14 point, the, the right part of the game. Thurso was completely warmed up and now he intends to put on another show. You see, whereas before he was hitting short shots and he was hitting the balls out, now he's right on target. Unfortunately, if he goes ahead by another seven points or so, he'll go back and screw it around with the, uh, the shots. Okay, we're ready to play ball. You know, Joseph's really. He's, 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 he's really not, Matthew. Really? No. What he's actually doing now yeah. is thinking about tomorrow, which he shouldn't be. You know, it seems to me if I were playing John Bike, I'd be thinking of those two serves he's been hitting against Fred Sylvia, which is the short line to the right ace and the long drive. I think about that. I want you to put something else into your computer. The next thing you should put into your computer is all the matches so far have been shots hit waist high or below. Derso is smart enough to use overhand serves to John Bikes right hand. We've discussed this many times. The way you unnerve power hitters in three ways. You don't hit it away from him, you hit it at his feet. The second thing you do is change the speed of the ball on the return of service, even if he kills it. You have to get his concentration and his ball control off track. And then the third way is to give him something that he wouldn't expect. And that happens to be an overhand spin serve by the wall that bites overhand right, which is his opposite hand. Now you're going to see those things tomorrow, and you haven't seen it up until this point in the tournament. See, that's bad for Sylvia. Joe purposely moves the man from side to side. He works him over, retires him a little bit more. And it all adds up. He, he hasn't gone to any other serve, but he's actually practicing for tomorrow. Let's see whether this low serves or not. It turns out the fight starts getting the low serve back at a critical point in the game. Where so we go for the open. Fight and not go to the open. What? He's a four wall player. And typically, being a big, powerful lefty, his strength is going down. This is one of those things in handball where the referee murmurs to himself. It's not audible to the referee who is at the short line. If you have one obligation as a referee, it's to make sure you make your calls loud and distinctly. 18 playing six. Okay, just like that. 18 six. Very short. You see, there's been a lot of play here, nothing really dramatic, and yet the score is still 18-6. Now, Freddy will make a mini move here. He senses that he's going down the tubes. So he's going to try and do. He's going to try and put the ball to a long run, I think. No, just put a little farther out. One of Joe's weaknesses is an overhand serve his left hand over the shoulder because it moves him off the side, which makes him have to turn his hand at that level. And if Freddy Sylvia then moves forward, he has the whole court to play with on the return. You know,